What a great way to come back, right? What up, Nets fans? Nets boy here to bring you the latest in your Brooklyn Nets news. It's been a long time since my last Nets boy um, episode. Almost almost a whole month. Uh, you know, my last video was at the beginning of the NBA Finals, and I gave my predictions, and the Spurs were up. Um, and you know what? It only got four views, which goes... I actually discouraged me a little bit because I know two of the views were was myself and one of the views were my brother and I realized, you know what? I guess people just don't care about Nets boy if it's not really about the Nets. That that's that's my theory. That's my theory. So I stopped with the videos and took a break and said, you know what? I'll continue a video if some other news happens with the Nets. And so that's what I'm doing though because here it is, July third. And holy crap, there's a lot of stuff to talk about. A lot of stuff. Um, let's just look at the finals real fast. Everything I said was true. It was basically the San Antonio Spurs against LeBron James in the finals in which the San Antonio Spurs won. I mean, there was just too much team that the Spurs had and not enough anything else. It was literally LeBron versus the Spurs. And that's why it was a five-game series. That's why the Spurs dominated. And I basically, I expected that. And you know what? I picked the Spurs at the beginning of the playoffs, and I was correct. I picked Heat and Spurs. I said five. Something's just never changed. You know, it's been three months. I mean, through three weeks. It's my last video, and I still drop the camera constantly. But, um, yeah. I picked the Spurs at six games. They won three in five. Whatever. That being said, NBA season over, we, and we've already hit the NBA draft, as we all know. Andrew Wiggins, first of all, pick, Jabari Parker, the Bucks, and the Nets made some moves and acquired three players in that draft. Markel Brown, Xavier Th Thames, and Corey Jefferson. And I did some research on all three of these guys. Um, the most exciting one is definitely uh, Markel Brown. This guy is has the potential to be a star. I don't know how you got him at the 44th pick. Um, I think it's because he doesn't really play defense and he doesn't have the greatest shooting range in the world. But he could be one of the most athletic people I've ever seen. Look up his videos and look at some of his highlights. He's like a 6'3 combo guard who can like do like windmill dunks and, and, and stuff like that. Like He does like these crazy dunks. He's really athletic, really quick. You know, they say, he said that he's like comes from the Russell Westbrook um, category of, of basketball playing. And you know what? It's going to be exciting because the Nets, we know what they needed to get younger and they need to get more athletic. And this guy is going to be great. Also, they were clearly looking for somebody to fill the void of Sean Livingston. Sean Livingston is officially gone with the Nets. Signed a deal with the uh, Warriors. I think $16 million for three years. Kudos to him. You know, I think as a Nets fan, all Nets fans are happy for him. They're upset that he's not on the Nets anymore, but everybody knows about his history and what happened. I think a lot of Nets fans are like, you know what? We'll overlook the fact that he's not going to be in Brooklyn anymore because he, if anybody deserves to leave someplace for a good contract, it's him. We'll move on. Um, I think Markel Brown is kind of like that backup policy. I can't believe he's a fourth. From looking at his highlights, this guy looks like he should have been a lottery pick. But I think the biggest knock on him is he's not a great defender. He's undersized. Uh, he's more of a two guard than a three guard. He's a little undersized. And he doesn't have the greatest shooting range. But when it comes to his athleticism and his abilities, I think the sky's the limit. So that was a great pickup by the Nets. Um, Xavier Thames is the guy I'm probably the least excited about. He was another guy they got. He was the 59th pick overall. He's like, he reminds me of Marshawn Brooks. I'm going to be honest. You watch his highlights. He's not overwhelmingly athletic, kind of, but relatively, but, you know, still athletic enough where he can, you know, create his own shot and get to the basket. It's about six foot four. He's, he's also, he's a, he's a two guard uh, with decent ball handling skills. But the way he plays, he's kind of like a Marshawn Brooks. He reminds me a lot. I was watching his highlights. I said, that's like Marshawn Brooks. And Marshawn Brooks was good with the Nets. Just couldn't get enough, you know, opportunities to play. And the knock on him is the same thing. He doesn't play defense. But he's a pretty good three-shooter, and I think that's what the Nets might use. Obviously, between 
Thames and Brown, somebody's going to be penciled in as a backup guard and get those guard minutes. You know, there is some rumors the Nets might try to go after um, Jared Jack, try to trade Marcus Thornton for Jared Jack. That would be a good pickup for the Nets because Jared Jack could be that point backup point guard, play some minutes side by side, all that stuff. But obviously the Nets are giving themselves options um, in the guard position. And then the last guy they got was Corey Jefferson. And now Corey Jefferson is a 6'9 power forward, kind of like a stretch um, four. He kind of reminds me a little bit of Hakeem Warwick with a little bit better shooting range. Um, he's very athletic, very long, doesn't have a lot of muscle, um, but he can shoot the outside shot. I wouldn't say his three-point range, at least not NBA three-point range. He has college three-point range, but not NBA. But he can stretch the floor. He's a good rebounder, average eight rebounds a game. He's going to be a, possibly a good player. The problem is these guys have to develop the rest of their skill set. They're all second-round picks in a very deep draft. But they need to develop their talent a little bit more. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see if they make a lineup and see if they make the team. That'd be pretty cool. I think they all have potential. I'm excited about Markel Brown. He's the guy who I'm going to say right now, um, I think he's going to be a rotational player. And I think he's got, I don't want to say star potential, but there's a lot of upside to his skill set. And I think he's somebody who could be very, very talented. And I was really shocked that he was 44th. Xavier Thames and uh, Corey Jefferson, they're kind of a toss-up. You don't necessarily know what you're going to get out of those guys. But that's what the Nets did at the uh, at the draft. Now, let's just go to what I think everybody's expecting me to talk about, and I'm going to talk about um, Jason Kidd is no longer the coach of the Brooklyn Nets. That whole thing with the power play and the you know him wanting more power to do things, and holy crap, what a disaster that was! And I read an interesting article that said that what started was Jason Kidd went to Billy King and said he wanted Brook Lopez traded because he didn't feel that he was going to fit in his system next season. And Billy King said, "Brook Lopez is a top five center in the league. We're not going to trade him unless we get a lot of good stuff." Like Billy King, he said that. They'll only go trade Lopez if they get fair value for him, and the Nets have Lopez's value way up here. So that was the beginning of the problems with the power trip. And then Jason Kidd got offended by that. Obviously, the more money going to Derek Fisher and Steve Kerr for other unproven coaches is just kind of like a slap kid in the face. And he got so offended, he ran crying to Milwaukee, and now he's the coach of the Bucks. Nets got two second-round draft picks. That's a fantastic deal in my my book. I mean, Jason Kidd with his great spilling drink strategy and being a very overrated coach. I mean, he did a good job, but he should have done better. For what the Nets' talent they had, I am not crying over this at all. You know, I wrote that song about Jason Kidd being fired. Then I took it back and said, you know, he did a good job, so I kind of took it back, but I am not crying at all. Jason Kidd can leave. I don't care, especially since Lionel Hollins is the new coach of the Nets. He, I could not be more thrilled about that. I want a Mark Jackson personally. You know him, I'm a Mark Jackson advocate. I said the Knicks should sign Mark Jackson. Instead, they went out there and got Derek Fisher. Okay, whatever. Um, but Lionel Hollins, I couldn't think of a better coach to coach the Nets. He's a defensive first coach, a proven track record. I really need to start getting like a really like set in stone camera. Jesus. Anyway, a proven track record. Great, great old school style coach. And the biggest thing is he knows how to use his big man. You have to remember, he had Zach Randolph and Marcus Gasol in Memphis. And he made that team go to the Western Conference Finals. Imagine what he'll do with Brooke Lopez and Kevin Garnett if Garnett comes back. Which signs showing that he will. That's going to be fantastic. He's going, he knows how to work big man into the post he has a good system set up i think it's going to be a fantastic fit in brooklyn i'm so excited for that lionel hollins the new head coach screw jason kidd screw his ego his ego screw his spilling soda tactics screw his dumb face screw him lionel hollins yes and i mean 
the fact they got two second-round draft picks and a lot of Hollins and all they lost is Jason Kidd, that's phenomenal. I can't be more excited. I'm excited about Markel Brown. I think he's going to be great. I think Xavier Thames and Corey Jefferson could be good. I'm just excited. Uh, that being said, a lot more going on in free agency. We just started. Like I said, it's July 3rd. So keep your eyes out for more Nets Boy um, episodes. You know, um, and, and keep your eyes open for him. I mean, I have four views my last video. You guys really don't care that much? I mean, I know I only have six subscribers, but that means I should have at least six views on all my videos, right? Logically, right? Maybe seven or eight because I know I view my videos. My brother views the videos. A few other people I don't want my subscribers tell me they view my videos allegedly. So, I am a, so where are you, people? Is it because the season was over that, you know, you're just like, that's boy. No one cares about what you have to say anymore. Well, whatever. But hopefully you guys find these videos, we talk about them, we get things going. Be super excited for the off season. Um, you know, there's some rumors about some moves the Nets might try to make. I read something about them trying to go after a Mecca Okafor. I think that would be fantastic. If they could get a Mecca Okafor for like the mid-level exception and bring him in, come him off the bench, bring some rebounding and defense, toughness, that would be a great pickup. Obviously, I told you about they're thinking about trading Marcus Thornton for Jared Jack. I'm okay with that, even though I do like Marcus Thornton. Jared Jack would be a perfect fit in that system. We'll see what happens. A lot to discuss, a lot to look at. But for now, Jason Kidd out, Lionel Hollins in, two first round, two second round draft picks in, Malcolm Brown, Markel Brown, Xavier Teams, Corey Jefferson, all in. I'm excited. I think the Nets have a good chance of really pacing together a decent team and be better next season. And we'll just see what happens. So. Keep your eyes open for more Nets, boy. Keep it open. Look, there's six, six subscribers. Anything less than six makes me feel inferior. Okay. So, yeah, thanks a lot. And uh, keep your eyes open. Until then, this is Nets, boy. Signing off.